Welcome to yet another example from chapter 2. As always, the reason that we include so many examples is so that we can come across and discuss any possible sticking point that you might see when you're working on these on your own in assignments or quizzes or tests. In this example, for the first time in this chapter, we are throwing downward. This is really important because it's probably one of the single most commonly missed major issues in chapters two and three. So let's start with our same problem solving technique by drawing a picture. We're on a huge building that's 200 meters in the air. And so here's our ball at the beginning and we're throwing it downward. Now, if we notice we've drawn this arrow down and gravity continues to work down. And so in step two, when we're listing our information, what we need to recognize is that the initial speed of 15 meters per second means that our initial velocity is negative because of the downward, negative 15 meters per second. This is extremely, extremely important. In kinematics, so that's chapters two and three in kinematics. Down means negative. So down is always a valid description, but once we have to start assigning plus and minus signs to things, down means negative. And unfortunately, no matter how many times I say it every semester, no matter how many times we put, write it in our notes, highlight it, circle it, this is still the most common major mistake that gets made for these types of problems on um, assignments and quizzes and tests. So do your best to point that out to yourself. Maybe have a little note card next to your bed that you look at the whole time that we're in chapters two and three but in kinematics, down means negative, even though there was no negative sign in the wording of the problem. We also know that we're here at the top of a 200 meter tall building, so we start 200 meters above the ground, and gravity here is negative. We've been used to that already, and our arrow has always been pointing downwards, so we just need to make that same connection to the fact that if they both point in the same direction as each other, and they do, they have to have the same sign as each other. All right, step three, rephrasing the question. We want to find blank when blank. We're calculating the time, so we're finding T for the ball to hit the ground when Y equals zero. Okay, so that's T and Y, so we use the YT equation. We've been using this one a bunch lately, uh, mostly because it comes up very often, but also because it's the one that we need the most practice with. All right, step four is to write down the equation. So we have y equals y naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay, now we start to plug in numbers. Our final y is 0, our initial y is 200, plus a negative 15 times t, plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared. I don't know how I can convey to you how important that negative sign really is. Not writing it down in the problem, you have just created an entirely new physics problem you have missed almost entirely the point of the problem. We've already seen examples where we're throwing upwards. We've seen how to do those and that's great. If you don't have this minus sign here, you've just created an additional example where we're throwing upwards. A lot of students uh, kind of get it in their head and, and they'll um, make notes when we, when we ask for kind of reflections on their work that uh, the only mistakes they're making are that they're forgetting some minus signs. And I need us to recognize just how extremely important that actually is. If you wanted to visit your friend in the UP, and so you, get, you got on um, 131, 
but instead of going north, you went south, right? It's just the wrong sign, the wrong direction. And you drove for two hours until you realized, oh, I am going the wrong direction. Now you're four hours away from where you wanted to be, uh, and it is a huge problem, okay? Putting the wrong sign is like getting on the road going the wrong direction, and if you don't fix it by, until you get to the very, very end of the problem, you're now so much further away than if you double-checked that first sign that you passed that said south, and you're like, wait a second. Always double-check and always look for those signs in the problem. Look for those, those mistakes before you make them. Okay, moving on. You'll notice I get very excited about this because it is a really big, significant thing to be aware of. Okay, 0 equals 200 minus 15t minus 4.9t squared. All I've done is um, just clean up the problem a little bit, get rid of some of the parentheses, multiply these two numbers together, and we see that we've got a quadratic formula situation. With this quadratic formula situation, when we're looking for A, B, C in the quadratic formula, so this is the quadratic formula, A is the thing attached to T squared. That's the negative 4.9, negative 4.9. B is the thing attached to T. That's the negative 15, negative 15. And C is the thing that's all by itself, but still on the same side as all of the other numbers, positive 200. Okay, so when we have these, we then plug them into the quadratic formula, which looks like T equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. Everything's over 2A. All right, so let's plug in some numbers. Negative times negative 15 is a positive 15. The negative here is in parentheses, so when this is squared, that negative sign will square and it will go away. And then minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 200. All of that was under the square root. And then this whole thing has been under 2 times negative 4.9. Okay, running out of space, so let's do it up here instead. So we have 15 plus or minus, we'll get that thing on the parentheses in just a moment, all over negative 9.8. So all of the stuff under the square root was 64.4. And we took the square root also. All right, so the two possible answers, if we take the plus sign here, 15 plus 64.4, and that whole thing divided by negative 9.8, we get negative 8.1 seconds. And if we take the minus sign, 15 minus 64.4, and all of that over negative 9.8, we get plus 5.0 seconds. Our step six check to see which one is the right one. In this case, it's a little bit easy. There's no time travel, so it has to be the positive number. That's our answer. One answer is correct, and it's this one. Both of them fit the math, but only one of them fits the physics. We just wanna take a moment and figure out what that minus 8.1 is trying to tell us if we imagine having the ball on the ground and we threw it upwards extremely fast, so fast that it went way over the top of the building and came back down and was eventually moving at negative 15 meters per second at the same exact spot, then if we went backwards in time with time travel, that would have happened 8.1 seconds before our problem began. So mathematically, it is trying to tell us something. It's just that there is no time travel. We were on top of the building and we threw the ball downwards. Five seconds, 5.0 seconds is the only answer that actually fits the fact that it started here and went down instead of 
time traveled its way from a previous throw. All right, the problem itself is finished. Um, we'll see the same steps every single time, but the really big important sticking point here is the one that I wrote in all capital letters in bright red text, in kinematics, down means negative. So in chapters two and three, we need to train our brain that because of gravity and the way that we treat it in our problems, downward velocities are also going to be negative. All right, we've got two more examples. I will see you in those, and then we'll be moving on to chapter three.